Hi everyone, I'm Kevin Nelson here to look at what's going on this week in the news. We begin with news from the Vatican. The first World Day of the Poor was celebrated at the Vatican, first with a Mass and then with a meal. Rome Reports has more from St. Peter's Basilica. As it couldn't be otherwise, the poor and the most needy were the protagonists of the first World Day of the Poor. Thousands came and filled St. Peter's Basilica, where several of them leading the procession that started the ceremony. It was also the homeless who read the readings of the day. During his homily, Pope Francis issued a warning. From St. Peter's Basilica and before 4,000 needy people, the Pope said the sin of omission is on the rise. This is the sin of those who think, to be good, it's enough to simply not do bad things. He said those who think God is a judge who only watches if he or she has sinned is wrong because God is a father. The Pope recalled that the poorest suffer the consequences of omissions and indifference. He asked for courage to come out of a self-centered mentality, centered only on one's own well-being. At the end of the Mass, the poor who were present moved to several areas throughout Rome where they were invited to eat. Some 1,500 joined the Pope in the Vatican's audience hall for a meal, while the other special guests were served at the Pontifical North American College and other seminaries in Catholic-run soup kitchens nearby. In news from around the country, during the beatification rite at a mass seen here on Catholic TV and in front of a congregation of more than 60,000, Father Solanus Casey became Blessed Solanus Casey. Cardinal Angelo Amato, head of the Vatican's Congregation for Saints' Causes, was the main celebrant. He was joined at the altar by Detroit Archbishop Alan Rignoron, Archbishop Christophe Pierre, Apostolic Nuncio to the United States, and Capuchin Franciscan Cardinal Sean O'Malley of Boston. The Mass was held at Ford Field in Detroit, and the congregation included 240 Capuchin friars and at least 300 members of the Casey family from across America and their ancestral country of Ireland. Blessed Solanus, as a simple doorkeeper, offered counsel to those in need, care for the poor, the sick, the marginalized, and the hopeless. He also co-founded the Capuchin Soup Kitchen in 1929, and today it serves the Detroit metro area, providing up to 2,000 meals a day. Blessed Solanus now becomes the second American-born male to be beatified after Blessed Stanley Rother, a priest who was martyred in Guatemala, was beatified this past September. More news from the Vatican. An international network of religious congregations called Solidarity with Sudan is organizing a prayer service for both South Sudan and the Democratic Republic of Congo, and the service will be held by Pope Francis in St. Peter's Basilica. Rome Reports has more on those details. On Thursday, November 23rd at 5.30 p.m. local time, Pope Francis will preside over a liturgical celebration in St. Peter's Basilica to pray for peace in two of the most afflicted countries in the world, South Sudan and the Democratic Republic of the Congo. The Pope tried to travel to both countries and was unable, but he is following their developments very closely. Up to 7 million people are malnourished in South Sudan, and a quarter of its inhabitants have had to leave their homes. The civil war there has been happening for four years and doesn't appear to be ending anytime soon. South Sudan is also one of the countries where being a mother means facing death. It has the world's fifth highest maternal mortality rate. Only 44 percent of pregnant women have access to medical attention. The Democratic Republic of the Congo is a battleground. Political instability has engulfed the country in chaos despite being one of the richest areas in minerals. Conflicts between the military, jihadist groups and sects, fueled by corruption, have led to mass burials and refugees. Millions of them. The Democratic Republic of the Congo has the highest number of internally displaced people, nearly four million, in the whole continent. 
In addition, its borders receive 500,000 displaced from other countries. Solidarity with Sudan is also organizing a roundtable discussion in January on building peace in the two suffering African nations. And finally in the news, a crowd of more than 20,000 gathered at Lucas Oil Stadium in Indianapolis for the National Catholic Youth Conference, which came to a close on this past Saturday. The conference brings together Catholic young people and their chaperones, youth ministers, campus ministers, parents, catechists, priests, coaches, and scout leaders. They all come together to participate from all over the country, as far away as Hawaii and Alaska. They also came to pray, learn, and grow in their faith. This year's featured speakers included Chris Stefanik and Sister Miriam Heidland, and some of the featured artists include Toby Mack and Matt Marr. Throughout the course of the three days, mass adoration and reconciliation were offered, along with breakout sessions on a variety of topics relevant to living as a disciple of Christ in today's world. And in partnership with Catholic Relief Services and Rise Against Hunger, there were also opportunities for the youth to participate in a service project, packing meals for the West African country of Burkina Faso, which does not have enough food in the country to feed all who are hungry. The NCYC is held every other year, so the next one will be taking place in 2019 in Indianapolis. Well, that is all the information we have for you this time. I'm Kevin Nelson. Don't forget, you can keep up to date on Catholic news throughout the week with Catholic News Break right here on the Catholic TV Network.